Thanks for staying with us. Now, yesterday was International Family Day. There are different types of family, and this includes a single parent family. Families around the world are changing and many becoming smaller. That's according to the UN. The number of single parent household is growing, and we have heard how some parents have not found it easy coping with their children during the lockdown. So we're asking all the single parents, how have you been coping, you know, being a single parent? We're joined by Catherine Tanzamado. She is the Deputy General Manager, National Health Insurance Scheme, and a single mother. Um, we also have Isiaka Bodian. I think he's going to be joining us via Skype. He is a creative consultant, Green Hill Consult Limited, and he's joined us in Abuja. Now, remember, you can join this conversation, Twitter, at Plus TV Africa, or at Wish Your Africa One with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start quickly with the, because we have a lot. Of, do we have, um, um, do we have the person in Abuja? Okay, okay. All right, so um, let's start from the basic, because a lot of times when people see single parents, they just conclude and say, bad woman she couldn't keep her husband or bad man or whatever we, no with men it's actually easier they exactly. are they are quick to say oh did your wife die what or happened? someone happened but with women they just you know they come at you and say i know it's you can't keep a marriage it's your character and all of that so yes. first of all let, let's understand how you became a single mother i got divorced okay yeah. from uh, and because you said um you only recently became a single mother about six years ago yes yeah, wow ago. you got it was a divorce that that uh, led you to becoming a single mother yes oh that's really nice so um what happened <laughs> what happened normally when you get into a divorce it's usually when you cannot agree on certain issues and uh, one person opts to leave for me the man preferred the divorce so i had to let him go awesome wow that's a tough woman right there <laughs> You can't force a man to live with you. No, you mm. cannot. You actually cannot. Absolutely. Yeah. So if we have, um, do we have um, Isiaka? Isiaka, yes, that's the name. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, um, yeah. Okay, thank you for joining us, Isiaka. Mm -hmm. So quickly, we want to also hear your background story. You, we understand you are a single father, and how many children do you yes, have? Yes, I am. I have four kids. Wow. So how did you become a single father? Um, <laughs> uh, just like he rightly said, uh, things didn't work out and we, I agreed and parted ways. Wow. Uh, but mine was a bit more complicated because I didn't say it on. Um, I wasn't advertising and I was mostly, you know how advertising is, you how, half the time you don't even know where the, how the home is, you know. Um, even weekends, are they're not yours, you know. So you rely on your partner more often than not. And then for her to just uh, up and, you know, go saying, you know, she's giving that much in and she wants time for herself, she wants to move on, it's a, it's a kick, you know. So I, I didn't see it coming, so it just hit me and I just had to roll with it and live on. So, um, Isaka, what has been a second? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Isaka, will hold on for a minute. Um, let me go to you, madam. What has been most challenging being a, um, a, a single, single mother? mother? I don't have a specific thing that has been more challenging. Two major things have been very challenging: okay. finance and loneliness. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's and a... how have you been able to cope through both of them? For loneliness. Let's take loneliness first. Yes. Well, how have you been able to cope throughout that period? That yeah, for loneliness, home? you get yourself occupied. You'll definitely be lonely, but don't dwell on it. Okay, what do you do to keep yourself preoccupied? I get occupied with the children, mm -hmm. my work. I do a lot of reading, and I go into the gym, and I do a lot of church work. I like to read my Bible and read books, so I get occupied. Mm. Okay. You have how many children? I have 11 children in my house. Whoa! Okay, now that I didn't see that coming. 
Okay, we are going to go. She said she has 11 children in her house. But how many are your biological children? No, I didn't give. Okay. Some are mine, some are not mine, but they are all mine. They are all yours. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, wow, that's a strong woman. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't even hear that before I called you a tough woman. Okay, so let me let me come to uh, Miss Yaka. How has it been managing the children? Because um, there's a lot of stress. It is easy when you have a partner yeah. that you can bounce off some of the stress, you know, and distress and, and, and exactly. separate yes. it. Mm -hmm. But you are alone, you have four children. How has it been coping and how has the society, mm. you know, accepted the fact that you are now a divorced man? Oh my God! Um, I have not coped. Um, hmm. You'll agree with me that the role are two different roles. You know, there's a role a man plays. There's a role a woman is supposed to play. And for a single uh, person to carry both roles, you know, there will definitely be challenges and uh, you know uh, blocks. Um, I have I have a girl. She's the the last and. Um, her mom left when she was barely four, wow. and um, you can imagine being saddled with those responsibilities, teaching a girl how to become a woman. And um, I had to uh, manage with uh, mates, you know, helps, and um, you know, young girls coming into your home and finding out that you're single, you know, and this funny idea is going through their head that they could find their way into your heart and. You know, become the mother of the house. The children. Uh, well, those were terrible challenges. Uh, yeah, I was long, I think we're having, we're having issues long, with his audio. Long. Sorry, we'll come back to you, Siaka, when we are able to resolve the issues of the audio. Um, so for you, um, Catherine, now... I mean, I can't even know where to start from. Like eleven children, what has been the biggest, um, the biggest fear for you raising those children all by yourself? My biggest fear is they are not turning out the way I want them to turn out. Well, so I always have a mental switch. You are switching from one child to the other. To, to the other. How old is the, the other. eldest and how old is the youngest? The youngest is now fifteen. The oldest is twenty-five. Wow. So, you know, and they are growing up, they are older, they are becoming very assertive in their ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are all by yourself. You want the balance of having a man. There are some things when they see a father figure in the house, they wouldn't get to doing. Mm -hmm. And you know, a mother is always a mother, no matter how tough you get to be. Absolutely. They always know it's mom, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And particularly the boys, they have a way of wrapping themselves uh, around They have you wrapped and... around their fingers. <laughs> yes. So, but uh, God has been faithful. Wow. Okay, so in terms of, he said he has been vulnerable, okay? Yes. Based on the fact that he, um, people tend to come to his house, those young girls coming into his house, feeling that, oh, they could I mean, actually ideas. find their ways to get to his heart. So have you had encounters like that? You know, for me, it's different. I'm a woman. Exactly. Have you had encounters no, like that in terms of no, no, no. individuals? Even co colleagues and all of in that. In church, no, wherever? No. My church embraced me so well. They've been supportive. In my estate, when I moved in, they said, oh, what's your husband? I said, oh, I'm divorced. I'm here with my children. And everybody has rallied around me. In my place of work, they knew when I got divorced, they've all been rallying around me. I don't have his challenges. He's a man. He can't cook. He can't get to the market. He can't do a lot of things. Exactly. I can do a lot of things by myself. And I'm so busy, so I'm not exposed. Mm. I'm at work. My work is challenging. Then from work, I come back, I have the children, I have to do a lot of homework. So those in secondary school, I'm doing homework with them. Those in university, I'm doing homework with them. Uh, my children in the university go from home. They school in Pan Atlantic University, so it's just okay. around a pair. Wow. Okay. So it's not, uh, I'm very busy. You occupy a very big role, you know, as a, the deputy general manager for NHS. So are there things that you're doing around single mothers in terms of insurance scheme? just to reduce the burden for them? You know, are there packages that they have for single parents? So far, we don't have any single packages for single parents, but we have packages for individuals. Mm. So they come, what I do, I just encourage single mothers to take up this scheme to help to reduce to help the, the burden, burden, the health burden. Okay, I think we have um, Isiaka oh, back okay. <laughs> online. Okay. So Isiaka, uh, if you can hear me, 
what do you think um, support will mean to you? You know, if somebody were to offer a kind of support to you at this time and, you know, going forward, what would support mean to you? Oh, um, I think I've almost out of the womb. Um, my, my last daughter is 13. Wow. And um, just when I thought I was out of it, she actually flung a new one last month when she, <laughs> she uh, uh, became a woman. Wow. And uh, you, don't, you don't want to know how that was. <laughs> I, had to, I had to call the mom and talk to her and have her talk to her daughter. Uh, because it was it wasn't easy for her, you know, to talk to me. We were close, we are close, but you know, there are some things that you just can't look your daughter in the face. That matter is not your forte <laughs> at all. <laughs> but but no, Isaka, no, I want to no, ask no, why why didn't you even why didn't you even consider remarriage? Because with women, with Catherine, I would understand if she's not thinking of uh, remarrying. Because women, we hardly do all those remarriage matter. We don't want all those drama. But for men, I think it's easy for them to remarry. But you, I mean, if you say she left when your daughter was four, the last daughter was four, she is, I mean, she's 13 now. I'm just calculating the numbers in my head. That's a long time, you know. So how come, why didn't you consider remarriage or anything? But you, uh, it's not easy for just any woman to be ready to carry four children yeah. for you. And then it's not easy to, if you had a bad experience, to easily just let it go and say you want to retry. So I had a bitter experience because I didn't see it coming. And when she left, you know, it was a big stab and I just didn't get over it. And um, even when I was ready to give people the opportunity, the phobia was still there. So I just wanted to just take care of my kids. Okay. okay, let me come to you, madam. What, what has, has there been any agency that has assisted you in any form or in any way in the cause of being a single mother? No, not at all. Maybe because I don't know where I need to go to. Okay. Yeah. And do you have um, people assisting you as, an, as a, a single mother? Do you have it, maybe family members? Because you said you, this happened like a, 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 six, a few yeah. years ago. Six. So six years ago. So do you have individuals that have stepped in to, to you support. know, support you? You know, as we, Nigerians, we are communal by nature. We live in communities. Exactly. I'll just give you an instance about my estate. Mm -hmm. Even during this pandemic lockdown, I had a lot of people in the estate sending me food. Wow. wow. They send me food, they send me money. Mm -hmm. Wow. They say, oh, kid, we just thought about you. You are locked in with many kids hmm. and so they send me food you have the church my friends in church also send me money you have my colleagues so you, you can't just be all by yourself hmm. well Catherine if you also now if I were to flip the same question to you okay if, if somebody were to offer you support what would support mean to, to you, you? Ah, finance okay I will want some financial support I want someone spending time with the children talking to them Mm. A lot of time when I talk, it's like, mm, mom is just talking, she's at it again, you know? Is it that you don't have somebody like a father figure or the pet, the, your, the, your husband or your ex-husband has not actually stepped in to, you know, aid you in um, grooming the children? Of course he has, but when a man does not live with you in the house, he's mm. not there. What I'm talking about is, um, I don't mind someone, it doesn't have to be one person, they are grown. Mm -hmm. I told you my oldest is 25, 25. Yeah, grown, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you discover that they have diff they have different they want needs. different mentors different mm -hmm. needs so even if the father was with me there will still be need maybe for someone else also to talk to them and all that okay mm -hmm. okay, okay. Uh, I, I think i think um i think it's it, it's quite sums it up um mm -hmm. for for us if you see a is there if you can hear me um it's car because we didn't really get to that stigmatization well I think that was when the, the line was a bit muffled. Mm. What has been stigmas that you have, you have um, experienced, you know, for Isiaka, and I, I think I'll also come back to Catherine as well on that. Mm. Stigma, mm. you know, if we were to address the issue of stigmatizing um, um, single parents, you know, what would you tell the society that, I mean, these are the things that probably hurt your feelings when you hear mm. those kind of words? Yeah, people, people need to know that these things that, you know, are thrown at us, you know, it's not specific to, to, you know, people. It's not specific to a man. It's not spe specific to a woman. It's just things that happen. 
and you know blaming them or pointing fingers or or you know talking bad about them it doesn't help you know uh anything can happen to anybody at any time um we're in a situation where we're, we're you know thrown into uh a ship with no you know no hall, no hall, no steering no you know no paddle and then we're just trying to keep afloat it doesn't make us bad in any way it doesn't make us less human it doesn't make us less loving you know so people need to realize and accept the fact that uh, if these things happen to people it may really it may really not be their fault i didn't want my ex to leave when she went when she did um it's not conclusive but i think she met somebody she felt she loved better and that she had given me all the time she could and then she moved on, she moved on. Uh, there was nothing i could do to to change her mind um the church couldn't help family couldn't help and they she ended up leaving and then for people to be thinking uh he's not good enough uh he didn't treat her well uh he you know he was he he, he must be a bad person you know it, it just doesn't help these okay. things happen we need to just pull people in, accept them, and do what we can for them. Okay, so let's talk about positive or having a um, managing stress and keeping a positive mental attitude during this period, especially COVID nineteen period. Have you been? How have you been able to manage this during this period? I really haven't been able to. What I did, just like I was trying to highlight with my daughter was actually reached out to their mom. Uh, she has not remarried, and she was still there, and we were able to bond, you know, have a good, cordial relationship, even though, you know, we're not together anymore, realizing that the kids, you know, uh, are, are there and that we're both responsible to them. I was able to make friends uh, with her, and then she was able to help talk to them, you know, uh, you know, put in words and stuff. So it's really up and... Um, assisted me if that wasn't there it would have i would have gone bonkers you know all them online tutorials uh getting exactly. them off their ipads to study getting them to make their meals you know tidy their house while i'm trying to earn a living it, it was herculean i would I, have gone to i think you, I mean, I you're agree. taking there's a question on whatsapp emeka is saying that during the pandemic how are you balancing working and following up with the children's education? I think it just it it when you were talking about taking them off their iPads yeah. to get them to and work. Online, so how have you exactly. been managing yeah. that? And I think I'll also ask uh, Catherine that question. Mm. Well, uh, the, you know, women are more of a disciplinarian when it comes to handling kids. Um, she does most of the handling. She calls and talks to them. And then I end up, you know, instilling the uh, fear of God into them and having them do what they don't want to do. So, you know, there are times when you just can't do it alone. You know, if you're lucky, you get another support. Maybe somebody you're in love with or a partner, you know, a friend or something or family, you know. I didn't have any of that. I had to turn back to her. You know, and uh, say the kids fear me, uh, they spend more time with me, they respect me, they value me, they, they love them, but they still want their mom. So to have both of us give them attention and the love they, they, they require, um, it was possible for us to balance our act and get them to do things that uh, uh, both, you know, family, you know, like a normal family would have been there too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it really isn't easy. In my case, I had to reach out back to my ex. Okay, so quickly, um, um, Catherine, Joy is asking, mm -hmm. because you have 11 children, how do you manage having mm -hmm. time for each child, ensuring you show love to all of them? How? Wow, that's a million dollar question. <laughs> uh -huh. I just do my best. Okay. And I trust God to help me. But like I say, it's not easy switching off mentally. You're switching off from one child to the to other, the other. Mm. to the other. And particularly, you know, like now, one of the challenges we have, because we are all clustered up together, so they'll be stepping on each other's toes. Mm. So I tried not to make myself anybody's mediator. Mm -hmm. I just stay back. And let them resolve it themselves. Let them resolve their <laughs> issues <laughs> themselves. I think you're a smart one. Yes. <laughs> and, and give you less headache. Yeah, because they certainly will yeah, resolve their issues. They're old enough, actually. They're old enough, they're old basically. Enough. Old enough. So how do you have your own, your alone time? 
That's a big question. It's difficult. They are 11, so they keep on, my room is a common room. They wow. keep on budging in and out, in wow. and out. <laughs> This person is here, when this person is done. So. I mean, it, this, this has been an amazing conversation. Thank yeah. you so much, Catherine. Um, thank you so much, Isiaka from um, Abuja. We'll, we'll go on a short break. When we return, Excel Adelaide will join us. <laughs>